claps are yours. Hello to my feet. It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to our fingers. Hello to my fingers. Hello to my fingers. Hello to my fingers. It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to our eyes. Some of us have eyes that can that some of our eyes can see, and some of us that are watching this video, our eyes don't work for seeing anymore. So those of us who have the ability to have sight, it's so precious. Let's say hello to our eyes. Hello to my eyes. We can blink them though. Hello to my eyes. Hello to my eyes. It's good to be here with you. How many of you guys got tongues? Yes, I hope you do. Good for tasting and helping us talk, right? And I just talk a lot of tongue. Yeah, you can't really talk that well without doing your tongues. What things can we do with our tongues? Let's see if we can roll our tongues. Can any of you guys do that? Can you stick out your tongue? Nice. Can you make a little circle with your tongue? Yeah, can you make um, like a clicking noise with your tongue? uniforms 
And I don't have like firefighter uniform or a um, police officer uniform, but I do have scrubs. Um, scrubs are the uniforms that medical workers wear. Nurses and doctors and acupuncturists and physical therapists, all those medical workers we talked about last week, um, off and surgeons, dentists, dental technicians, veterinarians, vet techs. We learned a lot of different um, medical uh, jobs from last week. And so this scrubs are what medical professionals wear. And that's because it protects their clothes underneath and when they get home, they can just take them off and wash them. Cause you know, when you're doing medical stuff, you might get some like spit or pee or blood or poo and lots of other stuff on the, like lots of fluids on the body, which are kind of gross and you don't want to have them in your house. So you take them off when you get home, put them in the washer, ta-da, you're clean. So these are my scrubs, my medical, or my uniform, a medical uniform. What uniforms do you guys have at home? If you want to, you can pause the video and run and find your costume box and see if you have any uniforms. Or do you have a school uniform that you wear? Um, yeah, just lots of different ideas about uniforms. And maybe you just have a hat, like a fire hat that you want to wear. So yes, this week I thought we would wear uniforms just for fun. So I have my scrubs on today. M is for medicine. Mm, mm, mm. So we're going to re review a little bit about what we talked about last week about masks. Because this week in Colorado, people are starting to go outside more. Um, and they are asking that anyone who's older than three years old, younger than three years old, nope, no masks, not safe for you. But they are asking that people older than three years old try to start wearing masks. And it's kind of uncomfortable sometimes. And it's kind of hot with the sun out and it's kind of itchy. But we talked last week about why it's important to wear them. So again, I just thought I'd brought, bring in some examples of my mask so you could watch me wearing it for a little bit. Look, my mom made this one for me. She made it for me for Easter. It's got bunnies on it. <laughs> um, and this side's just a brown side. So this is one example of a mask that I tie it over my head here. And I tie the bottom part here and I wear that one. Um, here's a surgical mask that they are asking that anyone who is a medical professional, please wear. Oh, ta -da. I can wear that one. See, it covers my nose and my face. And I have to do this a little bit because if you notice, it fogs up my glasses a little bit. Part of the thing about wearing masks, sometimes if they don't have the pinchy nose part, they fog up your glasses. And that can get frustrating. But it is important to still wear them. But just take your time. Again, here's another example of a mask. I have this thing called a bandana. Have you guys ever seen this? Kind of reminds me of the Wild West, like cowboys. And then I fold it from the square. Remember, you start with a square, and then you fold it corner to corner, and it turns into what shape? Yeah, like a triangle. And you can just put it on like that and be like, oh, here, I'll show you. I'll tie it on me. Da da da! Da 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 da! Da da! Like an outlaw. Another example is a scarf. It's a little hot for this now, but you can still do this. You put your scarf on. And you just pull it up over your nose. Then I have that kind of a mask. All right, I don't want to take this guy off. And finally, if you don't have any other things at home for a mask, if you have an old shirt, See how this t-shirt, this is just a plain t-shirt, just like this, and I'm not even going to cut it or sew it or do anything fancy. I'm just going to take the two ends and tie it. Just like this. Ta-da! And look, I have a mask. Yeah, kind of fun. So I'm going to wear this mask for a little bit, just a little bit while we're learning here, so that you get used to seeing some people with masks. Because sometimes when you see something for the first time, it looks kind of funny and you're not used to it. So it's helpful to get used to it. So that's why I'll be wearing this for a little bit today. And the other thing I thought of is that, well, if we're wearing these masks for health and safety, are there other masks? We talked about this a few weeks ago, actually, like in the very beginning of April, about how sometimes people wear masks for health, but sometimes we wear it for fun, like for Halloween, or um, we wear it for ceremony. So I have some pictures to show you of different cultures and when they use masks for ceremony. 
my computer just went typey type 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 <laughs> is this the one I wanted to show you that's one of the ones I want to show you this one first dun da da dun da dun da 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 zoom in for you this is one culture's version of a mask Venetian carnival masks they are worn during carnival in Venice and it dates back to the 13th century look how fancy these masks are they were paper mache eye masks um, all the way up to fine porcelain masks and they have long noses and elaborate feathers and um, yeah, so people wear that during the 11 days of Carnival, which happen in January or February, depending on Easter. Ta-da! How many of you guys know of the Day of the Dead masks? Dia de los Muertos masks represent skulls. And the, celebrated orig the celebration originated as a way to honor our ancestors who have died and acknowledge death is not the scary thing, but a natural part of life. And that's usually... Um, on November 1st and 2nd throughout Mexico and in Latin America. And celebrants, people who celebrate it, wear skull-shaped masks or face paint and colorful costumes. Uh, Chinese New Year masks. Dun, dun, dun. On the biggest holiday of the year in China and in Asia, various masks are worn during week-long celebrations to ring in the New Year's. They can be made from stone, metal, and leather and they are designed to display the moods and emotions associated with the festival. Brazilian carnival masks. There's a lot of places that celebrate their own version of carnival. Similar to the Venetian mask, because they kind of have a similar style, the Brazilian masks are also worn in celebration of carnival during the week before Lent. Filipino Dinag Young masks. I might be saying that wrong. Denag Young masks, and it's on the fourth weekend in January. And they wear these dazzling masks made of colorful materials, including feathers, beads, and sequences. See all the feathers there? And the festival has music and dancing, and they wear full body costumes and paint. Aha, this is um, Fatisma, African Fatisma masks. It's the festival of all festivals for mask lovers. It's dubbed the International Festival of Masks and Arts. It has a huge tradition celebrated in several West African countries, including the Ivory Coast, Senegal, and Burkina Faso. Mask making is an ancient custom in Africa, and it's celebrated to protect the tradition. Um, and we're actually gonna learn more about African masks in just a minute. Bahaman Junkano masks. The orig origins of this festival are kind of debated in the Bahamas, but one thing is for sure, the Junkano masks are amongst the most ravishing in the world. That means they're really fancy and really special. Look at this mask. Do you have an idea of maybe what kind of animal they're celebrating there? I don't know, I see these tusks and a big trunk, so I think it's almost like an elephant. And I believe it's a goddess in their perspective. The masks are shown off in street parades during choreographed dances that last all evening on Boxing Day and New Year's Day. Ah, this one's kind of a spooky mask. We talked about some people liking spooky masks. This is in Austria, and it's the Krampusnacht Krampus Festival. I always say that silly. Krampusnacht. Um, and it's uh, a mythical horned demon figure called Krampus. And as the folklore goes, Krampus contrasts St. Nicholas. So St. Nicholas gives um, goodies to all the good children, and Krampus is supposed to punish the misbehaving children in early December. Um, and here is Japanese Shimokita. Shimokita Tengu Matsuri Mask. It's also known as the Long Red-Nosed Goblin Festival. And that's the mask. See how it's got a big long red nose? And they're on parade floats and festival goers wear them. And the long red nose on the mask portrays a bird's beak. And the facial figures look like a human's. And it has to do with the mythological Tengu, which is a bird-like anthropomorphized creature. That means a bird that has human characteristics. That's a big word, anthropomorphized. That means has human characteristics. And it's in Japanese folklore. It's held in Tokyo over three days in late January and early February. 
and the festival centers around a parade, has a drum performance, has throwing of edible roasted soybeans into the crowd. Pretty cool, huh? So there's lots of different cultures that have masks. Now, I wanted to go a little bit more into the African mask. I'll bring that closer to you so you can see it. This is kind of a web page for kids. African mask. <clears throat> Maybe I'll zoom it out a little bit so you can see it a little bit more. Da, 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 da. There we go. Perfect. Boop, boop, boop. Um, so this a mask of painted wood represents beauty and peace. It was made by the Igbu Ekpe people of Nigeria. A mask is a covering for the face or the head. In many cultures, masks are an important part of traditional rituals. For thousands of years, African peoples have used masks in ceremonies. Every African mask is unique. In many African groups, masks are worn by dancers. Mask dancers participate in ceremonies that include songs and prayers. And different ceremonies can honor coming of age. That means when you turn from a child to an adult. Harvests, funerals when someone dies, and other events. The person who wears the masks knows exactly what he or she must do. There are many types of masks in Africa. One type covers the face. Another type looks like a helmet that covers the entire head. And still another type was worn on top of the head, like a flat hat. And each mask has a different story. And um, I'm just gonna go through here a little bit. Masks can be made out of leather, metal, fabric, and wood. They can be decorated with paint, shells, glass, fibers, horns or other items. So, now before we go to that, I had something fun for you to do. Come on, Tug, come on. Aha, this is the fun one. All right, <clears throat> let me spread this out so you can watch me dancing, because we're all gonna dance together. Oh, it looks like Tank ran off. Da -da -da. Well, that's perfect, because it gives us more room to dance. So, we are gonna go do some dancing now. Uh, because there is this um, special ceremony in Cameroon. Yes, in Cameroon, in kind of Western Africa. And they have this song called Dodo Kido. Dodo Kido. And um, it's kind of, <laughs> it's funny, it means yummy fried plantain. Um, and it's a song during the masquerade parade that kids sing in the village. And it's kind of interesting. It has seven beats, seven beats, seven beats, four beats. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. And then it does it again. And that's kind of how the rhythm of the song goes. I'm going to play it for you. You guys have fun dancing. I'm going to dance too. You can do some of the dances that I do, or you can do your own dance. Because this is really important that you guys have fun dancing the way you like to dance and african music whoo has got some good rhythms make sure i haven't turned the camera too much and accidentally knocked it second oh no i knocked it again that's good enough okay get ready for dancing Oh, 
lasso, lasso. Yay! What ba -ba -da -da -ba. a song. Whew. That is Dodo Kido. Whoo that was a fun one. Let's see if I can turn this back over so you guys can see the calendar. Perfect. Whew. All right. You gotta even dance with my mask on. It works. I'm gonna take it off for just a little bit. Notice how I took it off? Real quick. Notice how I took it off? I didn't touch the front part. Took it off by these ears. And then if I were outside, I'm inside my house so I don't have to. But if I were outside, I'd wash my hands right afterwards, after I took this mask off. Perfect. Whew, did you guys have fun dancing the Dodo Kido? So they said that this song, um, so their kid it has a mask on and is in the center of the circle, and they wear that mask and the kids around them dance. And the kid in the center dances and sings this song. It's Dodo Kido Tina Baba. Do, do, ki, do, ti, na, ba, ba. Yeah, and they say that three times. Do, do, ki, do, ti, na, ba, ba. Do, do, ki, do, ti, na, ba, ba. Do, do, ki, do, ti, na, ba, ba. And then they say, do, 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 ti, la, so, la, so. Do, 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 ti, la, so, la, so. Can you guys sing that with me? It goes. Let's do our, our beats, just like that song we just heard and danced to. Dodo kido tina baba. Dodo kido tina baba. Dodo kido tina baba. Dodo do tina so la so. Dodo kido tina baba. Dodo kido tina baba. Dodo kido tina baba. Dodo do tina so la so. Dodo kido. I'm kind of doing an eight because I'm. Not used to that seven fours, but isn't that fun? It's a very fun song. Hope you guys had fun dancing to that. Here's a strange and interesting fact. How many of you guys have heard of Pablo Picasso? Anyone? Anyone? Ha! Ah, hopefully you have. Wiggle your fingers if you have. Maybe you've seen some of his artwork. Picasso got some of his inspiration for some of his artworks through African masks. Isn't that interesting? I just learned that new fact today. You can share that new fact with your family if that's a new fact for you. It was for me. There we go. That's some of Pablo Picasso's artwork. It's called Comp... There we go. It was in 1948 he made that one. Pablo Picasso is one of the most famous artists of the 20th century. Why? Because he was brilliant at drawing. People really loved his doodles. What do you think of the drawing here above? Look at how he used color. See all the color he used? Does that look like some of the doodles that you've done before at home? Um, how many colors can you see? One. I see a yellow. I see a blue. I see a green. I see purple and red. Have I missed any? I might have missed some. I saw five, but maybe there's more. What do you guys see? What objects are in this picture that you see? That is interesting. Anything look like special objects to you? That almost reminds me of a hot air balloon. That kind of reminds me of a banana, but I don't know. That reminds me of a bird. Kind of looks like a table to me, but I'm not sure. What do you think? Ooh, a hammock. That reminds me of a hammock. <laughs> Even as a child, he was better at drawing than many adults. Pablo Picasso could draw and paint just about anything and in any style. He liked to experiment and try out new ideas, which is important if you're an artist because the world is always changing. Picasso helped to see the world in new ways. Horse with a young, with a youth in blue. another one of his art artworks. Picasso had different stages of his life. He was experimental and created many different kinds of arts. 
he had a blue period and a rose period where he used lots of blue and pink to make paintings. Um, then he had primitivism, cubism, classicism. Classicism means when you work with traditional or classic artworks. Surrealism, wartime, and late works. Those are all titles of his different types of artistic um, expressions, his periods that he worked in. You can look up each of those if you're older and want to look at it. Here's a closer look at cubism. One of his most famous periods is the cubist period. The painting below is one of his cubist pictures. Cubism is when the artist paints an object from all different kinds of angles at once, all in the same picture. So let me show you a picture of my face. It'd be like seeing my face in the front and the side and underneath and on top and this profile side and the back all at the same time. Yeah, so you see the front, the back, the sides of the bottle at the same time. In a way, it's kind of like having x-ray eyes. He was born in Spain, in Malaga, in Spain in 1881. But in 1904, when he was 23, he moved to Paris. That's because Paris was the capital of the avant-garde, which means the cutting edge, and was very cool. He became friends with lots of artists and writers, like George Brock, who invented cubism, um, with Picasso and a writer called Gertrude Stein, who collected art, wrote a cubist book. Um, he became interested in art forms from other continents too. Look at how expressive this work is. It looks like that person's dancing to me. Maybe that one's playing some music. Then there was a Spanish Civil War that broke out. And in this picture, um, he did some art that had emotion too. You kind of see a picture of a, this is called the weeping woman. So you see her face from the profile as well as from the front. And she's crying, which is kind of sad. There's a lot of sad emotions there. But they also talk about how there's a bird trying to drink her tears and that there's a flower which shows hope. So there's lots of different emotions in this picture. So what do you think of Pablo Picasso's work? If you drew a portrait of your best friend or your family member or your cat in the style of Picasso, how would it look? That's an assignment I have for you guys tonight, or today, if you so choose to take, take it. Eh, that's good enough. My homework for you today, one of them, I have a few actually. One, you know how Picasso drew pictures at the same time of a face up front, a face in the profile. You could do the top and underneath and behind all at the same time. Can you find a person in your house or an animal in your house and draw a picture of it in that style? Just like Pablo Picasso would. Kind of interesting, huh? Another piece of homework I have for you. It's about art, not about Picasso necessarily, which is really fun. How many of you guys have made masks before? I'm not talking these kind of masks. I am talking these kind of masks. Do, 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 playful, fun masks, like animal masks. And I think there's more safari animal masks. Do, 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 and ooh, bird masks. Everyone knows how I like birds. Maybe I should make a bird mask. And do, 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 I bet some of you, I know Aslan would like this. Superhero masks. So your other homework today, in addition to drawing somebody or some creature in your house, like Picasso, and remember Picasso used lots of colors too during certain periods, um, is to make a mask for yourself today that's not just this kind of a mask, but a fun, playful mask. It can be a mask in celebration of something, like maybe celebrating the springtime, or if you went outside and saw a baby bird's egg in a nest, celebrating the bird's egg, and you can make a bird mask or whatever you think would be fun. You can attach feathers to it, whatever you have around your house and craft. And if you don't have a lot of craft material, but you do have a paper plate, good enough, take that paper plate, color it, cut out two holes for an eye, put a popsicle stick on it, and you got yourself a mask. Ta-da! So mask making is something else you can do today. All right, M is for medicine. Mm-mm-mm. M is for mask. Mm, mm, mm. And M is for monkey. We are going to listen to a story.
story about a monkey. This is a cute little one. We have here Monkey and Me by Emily Gravett. Monkey and me. Monkey and me. Monkey and me. Monkey and me. We went to see. We went to see some. Penguins. Yay. How many penguins can you count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine penguins and a fish. There you go. Monkey and me, monkey and me, monkey and me, we went to see. We went to see some. Kangaroos. How many kangaroos can you see? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six kangaroos. Monkey and me, monkey and me, monkey and me, we went to see. We went to see some bats. I like bats. Oh. The person reading the book doesn't. Everyone has their own opinion. Too many bats. Monkey and me, monkey and me, monkey and me. We went to see, we went to see some elephants. Mommy elephant and baby elephant. How many elephants? One, two. Monkey and me, monkey and me, monkey and me. We went to see, we went to see some Monkeys! <laughs> How many monkeys? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I see an eighth one. Monkey and me, monkey and me, monkey and me, we went. Home for tea. Ah! So tired. The end. Hope you like mo Monkey and Me. I liked that book. You know what I liked about that book? I liked that there was my little, the little girl in there, or boy in there, the little person in there, the little friend in there, had their little stuffed monkey with them the whole time. Wiggle your fingers if you guys have a favorite stuffed animal that you have at home that you sleep with and that's your cuddly. Or that person's was a monkey. Theirs was a monkey. Mine is a giraffe. When I was little, I had a little baby giraffe that rattled. I think I brought it in some of the pictures. Um, as an adult, I have a um, platypus and I have a meerkat. Um, what do you have? Do you have a hippo or a little bear? or a, another animal that you like to bring with you? Or maybe it's a doll, like, like Woody from Toy Story or something like that. What I would like you guys to do today, I would love to see some of these. If you guys could make a book. The way you can make a book is you take a piece of paper, you take another piece of paper, and you take a third piece of paper. And then you fold them in half. If it's long ways like a hot dog like this, you fold it in half this way. And then you have all three pages together and you can make a book and then you have a book like that. And I would love to have, this person wrote monkey and me. I would write giraffe and me, giraffe and me. And I could pick three or four things I do today. Like giraffe and me, giraffe and me, giraffe and me, went to see and then dandelions and I draw a picture of me picking the dandelion to the giraffe and maybe putting a dandelion in his hair. Giraffe and me, giraffe and me, giraffe and me, we went to see 
birds. And then I'd draw a picture of the birds, maybe the chickens outside. And then I'd come up with that. So you guys can make a story about you and your stuffed animal and your special friend and all the things you do today. And you can just make four pages. And that way you can read it to me next time I see you guys. Or if you want to um, take a video like I am and have your parents take a video and you can read the book to me that you wrote. Um, and if you don't know how to write the words yet, you can get an adult to help you and then you can read it to me. So I would love to see the pictures you draw and hear the stories you create about what you and your little monkey or giraffe or hippo or teddy bear or whatever little creature you have, all the adventures you go on today. So that's another piece of homework for you. That's three, I think. One was the, hip, the story. Two was the making a mask out of a paper plate. And I forget what the third one was. Oh, my brain, it forgets stuff. I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. We'll figure it out eventually. All right, speaking of monkeys, let's do the monkeys jumping on the bed song. We'll do five of them, because I know that um, Mila likes this song. So get your monkeys, get them jumping, and actually, you guys are monkeys. So why don't you go ahead and jump? Or if you have five stuffed animals, get those jumping. You ready? Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped its head. Mama called the doctor, and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Five minus one is four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Four minus one is three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped their head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Three minus one is two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Two minus one is one little monkey jumping on the bed. She fell off and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Get those monkeys back in bed. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Nice job. All right. Let's do one more monkey song, and then I have a dance for you. Actually, let's do the dance first. That sounds way more fun. Okay, it goes. <clears throat> Monkey see, monkey do, monkey see, how about you? So monkey see, monkey do, monkey see, how about you? Let's try that again. Monkey see, monkey do, monkey see, how about you? All right? And so when I point to you, you guys can go around in a circle. And um, there's only one me there, so I'll do my turn first. So I'm going to come up with an action, and my action, let me make sure it's a big enough screen for you to see me. Ooh, not so much. There we go. My action that I'm going to do is this. See if you guys can do that. And we'll sing the song and do this together. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, how about you? And then somebody else has to come up with a movement. And this person's going to do this. So we all have to do this. Monkey see, monkey do, monkey see, how about you? This person's going to do this. So we have to sing. Monkey see, monkey do, monkey see, how about you? And then everyone gets a turn. So let's do three. Anybody notice something wrong here? I said three, and I put up this many fingers. One. <laughs> Two, three, four. Ah, let's do four more monkey see monkey do's. I'll just come up with all these moves, but when the TV's off and you guys are, or the computer's off and you guys are doing your own dance, come up with your own moves and have everybody in the house try to come up with a move. You have to all do it. You ready? Monkey see, monkey do, monkey see, how about you? Um, I'm going to do this. 
So everybody has to do this now. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, how about you? I'm gonna jump. Everybody has to jump now. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, how about you? We all have to swim and make a silly fish face while we're singing. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, how about you? Mm, I'm gonna do this. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, how about you? And last one. Everyone has to do this now. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, how about you? All right, I'm gonna, I can't see what movement you're gonna do, so I'm gonna let you do it, and I'm gonna sing it. I'm just gonna drum. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, that will do. Yay! That was a fun dance. I cannot wait to see all the movements you guys come up with in your family with everyone doing this monkey see, monkey do song. All right, let's do one big song before we go. Let's do the animal fair. about what you did today. See you guys. Bye.